is being recorded. I think this is my third one. This one was, you know, the age old. <laughs> is your hand tired? <laughs> I've been seeing you working hard with your hands. Uh, like you're such a monster. <laughs> and um, then I stopped reading and just blocked it and sent it to spam. That's kind of my routine. I think I've gotten five or six in total. The first one, I was at work, and I think it had some form of an older password that I had as a subject line. And then I read the email, and basically my heart just like stopped. I was like, oh no. So I just turned around and was like, hey everybody, like you might get a video of me jerking off. I just want to let you know before like you get an email kind of thing. And they were like, what? I like explain the whole situation and then someone was like oh no I got one of those like it's totally fine like that's not gonna happen I thought I was doing the best thing I could and just like jumping out in front of it but I, I guess I wasn't I guess I could have just kept it to myself which is the funny thing is like after this I basically told people about it to the extent that I realized that like almost everyone I knew had gotten at least one of these What would you do if they did actually have footage of you masturbating and threatened to release it along with the porn that you're watching? Would you pay the ransom? Oh my God, I would freak out. I mean, no one wants their sex images or nude images to be published if they weren't planning for it. God, I don't know. I guess it depends how much money. But <laughs> I think anything over a thousand bucks, I don't know. I think I would probably just let it happen if that's what it came down to. I mean, I would consider paying it, I guess. You don't want that out there, but at the same time, who's going to watch it? You know, I'm kind of just lying down, like, in bed in the dark. The computer's on my belly. Like, it would just be like a picture of my face, just kind of looking tired and, like, zoned out. I was like, well, that just isn't great content. It's probably a super low angle, just, like, really noisy footage. At least, like, if it's going to go out there, like, I want to look good. I think what was the most scary part was just, like, what kind of porn or, like, the fantasy being public. That still kind of feels coveted and, like, the act of just, like, masturbating feels like, okay, everyone does that. But I think there is still some intimacy and shame around not wanting to share what turns me on with other people. Whatever your turn-ons are, are embarrassing. I mean, like, a lot of sex is just embarrassing. A lot of sexuality is just embarrassing. It's like, get on all fours in a rubber outfit and I'd like to eat your ass while you fucking sweep the floor. It's like an embarrassing sentence, but it's true for somebody. Masturbation isn't performative at all. And so it's, like, vulnerable, I think, in the way that a diary is vulnerable. And there's something kind of shameful about sharing how you really feel with the world. And in some ways, that's the great joy of 
masturbating, so you can be into whatever, and it should be a judgment-free environment. Uh, it was definitely something that I learned about in middle school through my peers. And of course, it was the boys that would talk about it. I think it was something like 12 or 13. You're like talking about masturbation with your guy friends. Almost like, have you done this thing? I'm gearing up to do this thing. It's, it's, the, it's the summer of 99. I'm going to gonna do it this year i don't know something like that i just had my 10th birthday and had had my first wet dream and then <laughs> immediately just put it all together <laughs> and then literally like went to the rest of my friends none of whom had gotten anywhere close to puberty yet and was like guys i've figured out this thing it's incredible you'll be uh fucking blown away it was like after I got that like good review from a close friend that I was like, all right, I'll, I'll give this a shot. I started off young. I was like 11, fifth grade. I was probably 12. I think I was probably 13. More around college. I just never really tried it myself until I got into my 20s, just because of having body things, being trans, and the, the group of friends that I was hanging out with really loved to talk about masturbating. And eventually I got some prosthetics and, and toys that made me feel more comfortable with myself. Because I felt more comfortable with my body, I was like, okay, I think I'm finally ready to try this out. And then it, of course it felt amazing. And I was like, why haven't I been doing this my whole life? I think the first time I saw any kind of anything and it made me feel that I wanted to touch myself was accidentally flipping through my parents' black box and catching like Playboy on TV. I was like, oh, that seems like something I'd be interested in. <laughs> I used to just like purchase pay-per-views and my dad would never say anything about it too because he definitely saw the bill, it was high, but I ordered a bunch of them. And I didn't have a TV in my room, so I'd be in the living room and I'd record them. It would be, you know, 30 minutes of porn and then someone would come through the living room so I had to switch it out and there would be like a few minutes of Spongebob or something like that. And then back to porn and then back to Spongebob. I had been experimenting with masturbating and watching 30 second clips of like free porn. And after feeling the pleasure, I'd always have this immediate feeling of grossness and, and dread and like doing something really wrong. You know, it's almost like you finish a big meal and you're like, oh God, please someone come take this plate. This is like immediately disgusting. Or like you have an egg for breakfast and you're like, wow, this egg is so good. And then you finish and like your plate is stained with the yolk. And it's like, I can't believe I just ate a liquefied, unborn baby chick. I don't know. It's like there's some carnalness about it that I think once you're out of the fog of desire, it just looks like a bloody mess, you know? My shame is lack of self-control. It's always going to be that. And I equate it to like eating junk food. It's fine if you do it once in a while. But if you're eating McDonald's three, four times a day, there's something going on there where it's like, well, you have zero control over yourself. I think it's more just like this notion that we should always be productive and that you're, you're doing something like that's deeply just for yourself. I was like, mom and dad, like, I can't do this. I'm not worthy. I have not been righteous. And like, I can't have a bat mitzvah. I wouldn't <laughs> dare say because I've been like masturbating like crazy, but that was the general sentiment was just like, I can't comfortably move through this huge transition and celebration, like knowing that I'm shrouded in the sh shame of masturbation. The shame that I had was about being queer, thinking like, oh, maybe this is a phase and maybe if I just ride it out and still masturbate, that'll just sort of work itself out. And then six years later, I was like, 
It's a really long phase. I don't know what's happening. And then kind of came to terms with it. Also, I think porn has a lot to do with like the shame of masturbation. I think part of the shame comes from, you know, thinking about where the porn is coming from and if it's ethical. And then there's also shame about what the content of the porn is itself. Aren't there studies regarding that? Like the more porn you watch, the more depraved your searches get. And I found myself looking at weird shit. It's elevated to a point where it's like everything has to be so intense or so shameful maybe in order for it to be valuable or worthwhile of your time. I would be sort of morbidly embarrassed if 10 years into my relationship, like my partner walked in on me masturbating. I would still be really embarrassed and and be like, oh God, this is not me. I think it's wrapped up into, well, am I not enough for you kind of thing, especially if they catch you doing it, right? Or they see it on your browser history and they're like, you gotta talk to me about this. And I think most men don't, you know, most men put that aside. It's like, well, this is, this is my fantasy world. This is separate from you. I think it's wonderful to open up though. I think it's great to work on that. I think it builds so much more connection with your partner. And uh, honestly, it makes sex a lot more fun, I think. There's so much wisdom and like, how you interact with self to like share with someone else to be like, hey, this is what I know to like versus this is the activity I do when I'm single. I think especially for a woman, it's a very important part because we're so complex and with masturbation, you discover exactly how you feel, what you like, uh, reaching orgasm, which a lot of women never, for example, experience it because they never actually masturbated. Masturbation to me, it's, you know, the foundation of your house. I mean, your whole sex life is starting here. I think it's a sanity protector. I think it's a stress relief. I think it's a dopamine response when you need it. I think it's a sleep aid. I think it's a way to communicate on some level. (laughs) I don't know, it's just primal need just like breathing and and eating drinking whatever like touching yourself it's fundamental to me i mean i will do it for the rest of my life i think you should masturbate if you want it as long as as much as you want it (laughs) (laughs) i love that i don't believe it cool okay thank you for taking time my pleasure i'll talk to you soon all right bye